Hi guys, welcome back to the face hugger tutorial uh, designed by Donnie. <clears throat> and um, this is the last stage of tutorials, which will be shaping. Um, now, what I recommend you have is uh, a picture of a face hugger from the movie. That way, you can kind of tell what it's going to look like. Um, we no longer need our crease pattern, uh, but I would advise that. I have a picture of it in my head. So I'll be able to just kind of show you the gists of shaping. Now, uh, I commonly shape with methyl cellulose, also known as MC, but I know not everyone has that. So for that purpose, I'm going to shape it here um, without MC. And then at the end, I'm going to finish off with MC and just show it to kind of show you guys how you can better it with MC. But at the same time, if you don't have it, it's not necessary. Um, so first off, um, we've got all these flaps right here. And we're just going to fan them out properly. So I'm going to start off with this back one. And these back ones kind of, um, they're, these are actually going to use for like sacks. Not exactly sure what to call it. Uh, but I'm going to do a simple, this is the underside, so I'm folding them down like that, and then I'm just going to fold them to the side and point them towards the tail, like so. Uh, and you'll see what we're going to do with those later, but just for now, I'm going to point those out. Uh, you want to try to make them pretty even with each other, especially later because they're kind of symmetrical, but if they're not uh, perfect, no worries. And then the rest of the eight flaps will be legs. So we're going to, um, now I'm just going to do a couple folds just to the side. So this leg is pretty much flat out to the side. Like that. So we'll open this right up to the side. Actually, sorry, I messed up that order. So we're going to use these, this one, as the sack. Just because I forgot that there are two layers. So um, let's just switch those. We're going to fold this up. This will be our little link to the side like this. Same thing with this side. Like so. Um, and then the next leg we're going to use for the flaps. So just fold that down over the other one and point it towards the tail. So this is what you got so far. And then do the same on the other side. Like that. And just press down really hard. The layers might start to feel thick. Um, so make sure you're creasing it really well. So now we're going to move on to the next leg. And this one, we're just going to fold a little bit above this leg. So that's going to be the back leg, like this. And on this side, just folding it like that. Um, we're going to do the same on the other side. 
Now, um, as I'm shaping this style, this tutorial is kind of open-ended because that's kind of how shaping is. Um, you just add details as you see creative. And so if I change things or make mistakes, that's just kind of part of the shaping process. And I would edit those out, but for this case for shaping, I'm not going to. Just so that you guys can see, just kind of, you know, it's okay to make mistakes or change shaping. Um, it's not just one way to do origami. All right, so now we got two pairs of legs left. Um, we're gonna fold this one just a little bit more facing upwards, like, like that. As you can see, I kind of have a fan going on with these legs. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the place where I'm folding, they all kind of overlap each other. So that section is actually going to be pretty thick and you can see it's starting to distort the paper layers right here. Um, don't worry about that for now. Uh, this is kind of what I call as layers exploding as they shoot out to the side, but uh, we'll shape those out later. Um, so don't, don't worry about that too much. Just make sure you have the general form of it. Methyl cellulose really helps with solving that, but uh, if you want to just squeeze them back in and crease really hard. Okay, so now we need um, just the last, last two. And these last two, I'm actually just going to keep them kind of out in front. Um, I'm just going to spread them just a tiny little bit. Really not that much. Uh, more of it's going to come when we shape it down. So it's going to kind of place them out to the side just barely. And, uh, again, how I'm achieving these folds. The technicalities don't really matter too much. Uh, just worry about the direction. All right. So we got that so far. Um, basically the layout of this, uh, these four are legs. These two are gonna be like the sacks. Um, you'll notice there's like a double layer right here on the pleats. This is also going to form a body shape. And um, it's actually gonna go forward. And that's kind of the structure for the face hugger. So, so we're gonna do the tail last. Um, right now, I'm going to show you how to fold the legs. Uh, now, depending on your paper, you can get a variable thickness on these. I'm gonna try to make them as thin as possible just cause that's the style I like. So one way to do that is, as you notice, there's um, these flaps open up in the middle. And what I'm going to do is, if you can see, I'm actually going to fold each half to that middle line that forms. Um, keep, keep tabs of what direction it's in so that you don't mess it up on the crease. As you can see, about right here, uh, I'm folding that with it and so now on the other side I'm going to fold it towards that middle line make sure all the layers are pretty even you don't want to be too sloppy on this part and then once you have that you're going to close up that center and if you folded everything correctly going to form a thinner layer, like so. Alright, so now I'm going to do that on the other side. one side 
Here's the other. I'm just going to fold to the middle. And then close up those flaps. together so it lies flat right doesn't look like much yet and now the rest of that is going to be the same way how I thin the rest of these legs so right now I'm going to show you some more details on these front ones and then that's going to continue on to the back three right here um, and I'll, I'll just time lapse those because I don't think you need uh, eight examples of thinning them out. So let's th start with this leg. Um, if you want, you can actually make it even thinner. Um, and the technique I like to do is on the underside of this leg, because it's already pretty thin. So if I just tried to fold it in half, it probably wouldn't happen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my fingernail through the middle of this to kind of get an indent of a crease. I'm just going to run that all the way to the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bend it along that crease in the middle line. And as I do that, I'll slowly pinch them together just to hold the crease. Now, if you methyl cellulose your paper beforehand or treated it, this is going to help keep the layers together. Uh, if you're using a bit more resistive paper than, you know, the paper I'm using, and you should be fine without the methyl, methyl cellulose. Um, but there you go. Now I thinned it kind of even more. And what folding in half does is it makes the plane of that crease vertical. All right. So now the crease is like that. It's not laying to the side like this one is. Um, I hope you can see that. Right, so now that the plane is vertical, what I'm going to do is about, you know, a third of the way up, I'm just going to open up that half mark we just made, just a tiny bit, while pinching this bottom section, and I'm just going to kind of make a crimp fold. And so how I'm going to do that is this middle part, I'm going to leave open. And I'm going to pinch the rest of the paper, and I'm just going to squish it together a little bit. And squishing it together creates kind of this bulge. And this bulge, I'm just going to fold back my fingers real gently, kind of like that. Now, it looks really small, and that's kind of how I want it. I don't want to lose the length of the leg too much, but it adds direction to the leg. As you can see, it kind of bends. And that's kind of what we want here. Um, make it look really creepy and so a little bit further up about a you know half that length we we'll do it again towards this bottom side so again I'm gonna open up where I want to fold I'm gonna pinch the back end and I'm going to pinch the forward end squeeze them together a little bit and then finish that crease off like so now you have a segmented leg like this. Um, if you wanted to add even more detail, I would thin out the layers by the joints. Um, not sure if you can see that, but you know you don't have to do that. It's kind of hard, especially if your paper is you know smaller or thicker. But sometimes at these joints, I like to leave it a little thick just so you can tell that there's a joint there. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg again, just so you guys can see. And first step is on the underside, I'm going to run my fingernail down through the middle so that I can fold it in a half once more. And I'm just going to start to crease it like this. All right now it's big enough that I can kind of pinch it in half. As I pinch it in half, 
<clears throat> I'm going to run my fingernail up to help the crease go through the middle. All right, then we have our vertical um, fold. And then once again, um, about a third of the way up, I'm going to hold my thumb right here. I'm going to get that little knot going. Squeeze the other half, push it together, make a little joint, and boom. Got our first joint. Now we got our second joint up here. The nice thing about these joints, you can, you know, they don't have to bend down. You can bend them upwards. You can use it to bend to the side. Um, it's a good way to get just simple legs, um, but make them look a little bit more realistic or creepy insect-like. Um, so we have those two. Uh, right now, they're, as you can see, they're kind of sticking out in the front. They're not very symmetrical. Sometimes I like to curve out the outer unit, just my fingers a little bit, and then curve it back in. And that just gives it some shape, add some personality to the paper. Uh, we don't want this creature to look stiff because it's supposed to look scary. All right, so I'm going to do the other um, legs as a time lapse. Um, and so just so you remember, it's going to be the next flap, flap after that, and then this thin, really thin flap. This really thin flap should become the thinnest leg. It'll be really easy to fold this one. Um, just be careful with your paper not to tear it since it is thinner. It's going to feel a little different. All right. I'll meet you back after I finish this. All right, guys, we are back. Um, it's the next day, uh, a little bit of better lighting. Um, Hopefully that doesn't uh, mess up the way you guys can see this, but it should be better than the darkness. So finished up all the legs and shaping. <clears throat> so now we're just going to continue with these parts, which is the sack area, and then we're going to do the tail. And that'll be pretty much it. So let's start with these things. Um, again, it's going to be symmetrical, so I'll do one. It'll be the same as the other. But basically what we're going to want to do is flip it over like this and then you'll notice this should have kind of a split in the middle um, that should go down pretty evenly and what we're going to want to do is kind of open that up and then just kind of do kind of a spread right here uh, I'll fold it first and then I'll show you guys there you go so it's trying to be like a perfect squash but um we just want the direction of it to kind of be over here right so we've got that I'm just gonna fold it down it's gonna be like that if you guys can see it and basically from here, we're going to stretch the layers on the inside. Now this might seem a little bit difficult, but um, don't worry too much. Um, basically, we're, we'll do this side first. If you open up the layers like this, you'll notice that there's another one on the inside. Um, and that happened from like our accordion folds and stuff. Um, and so what we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna open up that layer and then grab the one on the inside. We'll do this pretty carefully so you don't tear your paper, but um, you're going to grab it like this, and then you're going to grab the top corner so that the paper doesn't slip out, and then you're going to slowly pull until it comes flush out of the flap. Um, and I like to start by creasing that edge and then using my fingers to evenly fold down 
like so. That way all the folds and shape stays nice and neat. And on the other side, that's gonna happen as well. So it should look like that. Now that step might have been kind of confusing. So I'm gonna do it again on the other side. And now since we have this fold right here, it's gonna be a little bit different, but not too bad. I'm actually gonna just readjust it a little bit so that won't give us problems. All right. And because of this fold, this flap's gonna be a little bit smaller than that flap, but shouldn't matter. So we're gonna open up like this, find that flap in the middle, grab a hold on it, and then we're gonna grab the top. You're just gonna pull a little bit and then you'll notice that this part comes flush and then this one won't stick out as much as the other one but we're gonna still try to get as neat of a crease here as possible near the top and then near the bottom if you guys see how it's rounded so we're just gonna allow that to kind of flatten down um, and then crease just so that it'll lie flat. So, let's see if I can get a closer up for you guys here. It's gonna look like this. And then on the other side, it's gonna look like this. Um, I hope that's in frame. Cool. Um, and then we're just gonna readjust this so that it faces this way. Now we're going to want to shape this flap a little bit more. Um, if you look at our pictures online, these are smaller than the legs. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of round it out. So I'm going to take this top portion right here and I'm just going to fold it down. Um, you'll notice that there you can see your grid. So I'm going to fold it two grid marks down like this. <clears throat> you can see that. And then on the corners, I'm going to flip this over. The corners, I'm just going to uh, valley fold them inside. And no real specific direction, uh, but I'm just kind of trying to round out um, this flap so it matches pictures online. Um, this is just kind of general shaping, but um, for reference, kind of shape it like I'm doing. You guys should be okay. Um, the goal here is we don't want any hard corners because that will detract from the detail of the model. Cool. And then if you have this part sticking out, we're just going to shove that kind of under the body. Um, once we crease everything down better, it'll work um, and stay a little bit better. Um, this little part here, just to round out this flap a little bit, I'm just going to curl a fold by the corner a little bit, and just pinch a little bit. That's going to start giving it a 3D effect. Um, and we have our flap like that. Cool. So we'll worry about the rest of the shaping a little later. So we have one sack here. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, first we're going to flip around here, we're going to open up this little flap right here like this so that's even, and then we're just going to do that tiny little squash here, give it proper direction, kind of match the other side, you know, if it's not perfect, don't worry about it too much, again this is shaping. This kind of goes however you want, but <clears throat> I'm just going to provide some direction, help you guys out. So it'll be like that. And then we're going to take, uh, I'll flip it this way. We're going to open up the side layer and find the hidden layer that's inside. We're going to hang on to that, hang on to the top, and pull, like so. And gently crease that down so that everything remains clean. There we go. 
and then we're gonna do that on the other side as well but don't forget that this side is gonna be a little bit shorter than the other one the top is gonna be about the same but as you fold down like this it's gonna curl in and then you're just gonna to want to follow that down to the edge so that it lies flat and just squish it down squish it down neatly like that All right, now um, let's move this leg out of the way. Boom. Actually, bring it up here like this. this down here all right now we're gonna do the same kind of steps as we did on the other one we're gonna go two marks down on our grid on this uh, you probably can't see out here but hopefully you can see on your own model uh, and if you can't you know just fold around this area um, and then we're going to fold valley folds on this side just into the paper so that we can get some shape going and basically here I'm, since I already have one flat or one of the sacks done I'm just gonna try to make it look like the other one keep it kind of consistent Oh wait, they're about the same size, same shape. <clears throat> and then on this inside corner, I'm just going to pinch in a little bit. And that's going to thin this side a little bit and also give it some curve. Cool. Now we're going to display this model facing this way. If you guys want to hide some of these folds, you can reverse fold them on the inside. And then they, they won't show up. But um, depending on what your paper looks like, I think for mine, they'll be hidden enough. Um, it's because the paper is the same color and everything. Right? So I'm just giving some extra folds near the base just to solidify the sacks a little bit. Um, here you go. And now, if you notice these legs, you're going to try to like stick out over the sack. Um, what you can do is you can just bend them further towards the other legs and then hold the sack down like this. That way it'll be in a proper spot. Um, like that. There we go. Nice. So we got that down. Now we're going to um, do a little bit on the body. So, <clears throat> um, let's see here. We're going to start with. Um, let's see going to be this flap right here and we're going to use actually the same technique we used for um, the little sacks here and so if you open up this layer a little bit it's got a ton of layers um, but we're just going to pick out um, some layers facing the top side so you'll notice if you open this up just kind of two halves there'll be this half and this half we're going to go on the side that's closer to the top and if you search through there, you should find um, just like some layers. Um, or actually, just right above the middle, there's going to be a layer that's really similar to the other flaps. So here we go, I found it. And it looks like it's right here, it's right along the middle. Um, and there's two of them. We're just going to choose the upper side. 
and we're going to do the same principle where we're going to drag it out a little bit. Now you got to be a little bit careful um, because um, since it's uneven like this, it's going to pull out the layers a little weird. But we're just going to want um, two layers out. So one's going to be like this diagonal, and another is just going to be a folded up layer. Um, so as you shape it out, just be really careful. Um, and the amount is going to be this. So we got this side, and then basically four along the grid. And as we squish it down, I'm just going to hold the model out so that this portion can be straight. right? And then if you notice, if I push inside like this, um, the second kind of layer right here, I'm going to have that line straighten out and fold down. And then this bottom portion is going to be curving. And so we're going to do like what we did on the sack and just bend it in like so. And we're actually going to try to tuck that last bottom layer down into um, the layers again. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull this layer to the side. So it um, might be hard to see, but I'm just going to angle this way. I'm pulling the flap towards the head. And that's going to turn it. And as I do that, it's going to flatten out. And you're just going to fold. And this is just to give us some shape on the body. Like so. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to grab that middle flap here. So I'm going to open up halfway and find a halfway mark. And there'll be a two kind of middle flaps that have diagonals. We're going to grab the upper one like this. I'm going to pull it out slowly. I'll hold it to the top. And then after I have that one, I'm going to let one more layer go. It's going to be really hard to not let all of them go, so <laughs> just be a little careful. Um, if they start to come out, just try to put them back before they're fully out. Uh, it can get kind of messy sometimes. Okay, so now we're here, and I'm going to make sure my edge lines are really nice. And then the second kind of line, which will be more in the middle, I'm going to push the layer into it so that it can be straight. Right, so do you see how I have just this line kind of right here? That's what we want to get. It's going to look like this on the other side. Um, that way, the bottom section is going to start to curve like that. And we're going to do the same thing where we pull it to the side and try to shove it underneath all the other layers so that it rounds out. So I'm pulling that way. Like this. So it's kind of going like a like this motion, like that. Um, there we go. And then as you push that in, you'll start feeling the layer be able to lie flat. I'm just gonna let it down like that. And this is just giving us some body shape. We get less uh, rectangular. Nice. Um, and now the final part to this model is going to be the tail. Um, tail, you can actually put a lot more details if you would like, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the way the crease pattern is collapsed, there's this double layer right here. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra pleat. Um, you guys don't have to do this, this is just kind of a personal thing that I want to do. And I'm going to reach into the middle of this flap, and you'll you'll 
you guys by now will start to know where the middle is. Um, and basically, as I pull, I'm gonna pull, have a finger on both sides. I'm gonna pull in opposite directions like that. And you'll start to notice that there's gonna be a line here. And there's gonna be a line here. And as I pull those layers, I'm going to start to fold along that line. So this one I'm gonna fold here. And then on the bottom side, here. So it's going to basically form a square and it's just going to squash down and that's going to give us one more kind of pleat. Um, I, I, like, I like that detail. It's going to be like this. And squish it down. Layers are going to be a little thick depending on what paper you use, but don't worry too much. Uh, we want a thicker tail to give it just some shape. All right, so now what we're basically going to do is we're going to try to fold just the tail section in half. Um, be careful with this. Um, so I'm going to start after this body segment we shaped. So it's going to shape down like this. And we just want to get some structure. Um, again, the tail gets a little thick depending on what paper you use. So if this is really hard for you um, and you can't go down the middle line, that's okay. Um, just kind of get it like the basic just to fold it in half um, and it's going to turn out to be something on these lines like that um, and again we don't want our tail to be like two-dimensional I'm just starting to set some shape here and um, actually if your paper's thicker this is this might help you but on the inside here we're going to start curving along the halves of each side um, now, it's not going to be exact, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingernail on the half section. I'm kind of just going to scrape down um, like a crease, like this. I'm going to do that on the other side too. And depending on what paper you use, this is going to help just in folding it. All right? So now we're going to start, I'm going to start to pull in on that side to kind of curve it along that crease we made. And um, if your paper's a little thicker, this is just gonna happen automatically as you try to fold it in half, right? And so by the base of the tail, it's gonna thin out. So I'm actually gonna try to crease that in half. You guys can see it's gonna be like this. And then the rest of it is just kind of a shape. Um, and I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. So I'm just gonna curl it in. And near the base of the tail, I'm just gonna fold in half like this. And then I'm just gonna try to crease as much up the tail as I can, but I'm not, I'm not gonna force it because it probably won't happen very well. Um, but most of the layers, my goal is basically to try to get the layers closer to the middle so that the pleats can kind of surround the tail. And that shape will be pretty nice. Um, it's gonna be like this. It's gonna kind of look like this on the inside. You can see these layers are starting to spread out. And if I flip it over, you're gonna start to notice a curve in our tail. It's gonna be like this. And as we try to fold it in half, it should curl around that thick section and make a nice shape. Um, the very last segment here should be pretty thin, so I'm actually going to try to fold that in half like, like this and just kind of crease it as the tail end just to give it some structure there you go and now this model is basically done now um, there's still a lot of shaping you can do um, and I'm just going to kind of talk over that um, as you can see these layers are billowing out so what I'm going to do, I'm going to shape it with 
methyl cellulose. Um, some people use glue. Um, I mean, it's not really glue. I'm not really gluing anything, but um, it's gonna help keep some shape to the tail. But uh, you kind of don't want your tail to just go straight down. You can kind of curve it how you want with these pleats. You can stretch out the tail a little bit, give it some shape, kind of like that as it curves, and it will become kind of cool like that as they're segmented. Um, also, the legs, I'm gonna give a little bit more structure. Uh, I'm gonna look at a picture a little bit more, kind of have more of an action pose, make it look really aggressive. Um, and then with the sacks, again, you can kind of just position them however you want, you can thin them out however you want. Um, and, but that's basically the gist of this. Um, now, to me, this isn't very complete yet. So I'm going to, off camera, just methyl cellulose shaping of it, um, just so you can see uh, kind of the difference uh, between some finally, finalizing and shaping. Um, the reason why I won't really show that here is because it, it'd just be another time lapse and, um, you know, shaping's kind of personal, however you want it. So uh, I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. If you wanna watch kind of a guide on shaping, I have that video on my channel. So you can use some of those techniques and kind of mentalities to do this with your model. Um, but that's basically it for shaping. I'm gonna go quickly uh, methyl cellulose it and that'll be on camera next. Okay guys, we are back again and I have shaped the face hugger with methyl cellulose. So you'll notice that the body looks a little bit more rigid, everything is staying together, the legs are shaped outwards, and the tail is curved and can hold its place on its own. Um, see if I can give you guys a better look here. Now, I was able to achieve this with methyl cellulose. If you do not have methyl cellulose in your country, um, I've known People like to use wallpaper paste or cornstarch or wheat starch um, and you can get the same effect. Some people even just use glue, but um, I don't really like to use glue. Methyl cellulose is a stiffener um, versus a glue. Um, so if I wanted to peel apart these layers, I could. And shaping using those materials just makes it kind of more complete. I like the look of it better than of all the paper flaps kind of going off on their own. Um, but you could, you know, you don't have to do this, but I highly recommend it just because it makes the whole model look more complete. But that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys could follow along. Um, if you have any questions or need help, you can uh, message me on Instagram or you can leave a comment. Um, and I'll be sure to reply. And I'll just have some quick shots of just different angles of the face hugger. I'll probably display it more vertically just for the effect of it, you know, jumping at someone's face. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. <laughs>